Welcome to a Practice Pro CPD, brought to you by Law Pro. Thank you for joining me as we review real estate fraud, keeping up the fight. This program is accredited for 30 minutes of professionalism hours. My name is Nadia Del Monte, and I will be your presenter. My role at Law Pro is as manager of Title Plus Claims and Counsel, handling both title insurance claims and errors and omissions claims for lawyers. Since beginning my career at Law Pro in 2006, I have worked in the areas of real estate, title insurance, and fraud prevention. Today's agenda includes a review of different types of fraud. Specifically, we will look at bad check fraud, identity theft, value fraud, corporate ID fraud, shelter fraud, and cybercrime. We will also look at red flags of fraud. We will review red flags to watch for concerning the client, red flags raised by the transaction, and red flags raised by staff in your office. We will also consider appropriate due diligence on suspected fraudsters and specifically steps to cross-check and verify information provided by the client. I will point you to some resources and address what to do if you have a suspicious matter. Fraud is becoming more and more sophisticated and real estate fraud is always evolving. It is extremely important to be vigilant and mindful of the types of existing and emerging frauds out there. And it is critical to train your staff to watch for signs of fraud as well. The value of real estate makes it a tempting target for fraudsters. If you believe that a transaction is at risk, don't hesitate to call the title insurer and discuss it with an underwriter. The underwriter may be able to provide you with insights or ideas for further investigation that will either satisfy your concerns or indicate that the probability of fraud is high. The rules of professional conduct address a lawyer's obligations in relation to suspicious real estate transactions. Commentary 4.1 under Rule 3.2-7 states that a lawyer representing any party in a real estate transaction should be vigilant in identifying the presence of red flags and make inquiries to determine whether it is a bona fide transaction. There are several examples of red flags, which could include purchase price manipulations revealed by, for example, deposits purportedly paid directly to the seller, price escalations and flips in which a property is sold and resold within a short period of time for a substantially higher price, reductions in the balance due on closing and consideration of extra credits or deposits not required by the purchase agreement, amendments to the purchase price not disclosed to the mortgage lender, the acceptance on closing of an amount less than the balance due, a mortgage advance which approximates or exceeds the balance due resulting in surplus mortgage proceeds, and so on. A second example of red flags is the involvement of a nominal role for one or more parties. Fraud is sometimes affected through the use of a straw person who may not exist or whose identities have either been purchased or stolen, as well as through the suspicious use of powers of attorney. The third example of red flags are situations where the purchaser contributes no funds or only a nominal amount towards the purchase price or the balance due on closing. A fourth example of red flags involves signs that the parties are concealing a non-arm's length relationship or are colluding with respect to the purchase price. The fifth example of red flags involves suspicious or repeated third party involvement. For example, a third party who is giving the instructions, supplying client directions or identification and providing or receiving funds on closing. A final example of red flags involves a situation where the proceeds of sale are dispersed or directed to be paid to parties who are unrelated to the transaction. These red flags are not an exhaustive list. Further information regarding red flags is available from many sources, including the Fighting Real Estate Fraud page within the Practice Resources section of the Law Society's website. 
fraudulent real estate schemes and the red flags associated with such schemes are numerous and evolving. Lawyers who practice real estate law have a professional obligation to educate themselves on an ongoing basis regarding the red flags of real estate fraud. On a separate point, keep in mind that mortgage lenders are often, though not exclusively, the target of fraudsters. In all transactions where the lawyer represents a lender, the lawyer should keep the lender fully informed. Rule 3.4-15 of the Rules of Professional Conduct states that when a lawyer acts for both the borrower and the lender in a mortgage or loan transaction, the lawyer must disclose to the borrower and the lender in writing before the advance or release of the mortgage or loan funds all material information that is relevant to the transaction. The commentary to this rule indicates that what is material is to be determined objectively. Material information would be facts that would be perceived objectively as relevant by any reasonable lender or borrower. Example is a price escalation or flip where a property is retransferred or resold on the same day or within a short period for a significantly higher price. The duty to disclose arises even if the lender or borrower does not ask for the specific information. I invite you to visit the Practice Pro Fraud Prevention website and the, the Law Society of Ontario for more on how to fight real estate fraud. I will now review some common types of real estate frauds that we've seen. The first one is bad check fraud. There are a range of bad check fraud scenarios. The typical scenario in real estate law is as follows. A purported new client will contact you, usually by email, seeking legal assistance on a purchase transaction. This will involve you receiving a check, draft, or other instrument that you are to deposit into your trust account and thereafter disperse the funds from that deposit to the client or a third party. You deposit in, into your trust account. However, the deal apparently doesn't go through and you're instructed to return the funds. Do not disperse funds unless the bank has confirmed that the check has cleared. Otherwise, the check may be returned and you will be left with a reduced trust balance, thereby causing a loss to other legitimate clients or a negative trust balance or overdraft. We see bad check frauds in real estate and in many other practice areas as well. Please consider visiting avoidacclaim.com to learn more about the different types of bad check schemes out there. You may wish to consider subscribing to avoidacclaim.com as well to receive updates about new frauds being attempted against Ontario lawyers. Next, I will review identity theft. Here is the scenario. The fraudster client will use real looking fake ID to assume the identity of an existing property owner and then sell or mortgage the property or will fraudulently discharge a mortgage already on title and then get a new mortgage from another lender. When the transaction closes, you pay proceeds to the fraudster client who then disappears with the funds. We have seen fake Ontario driver's licenses used on a number of these frauds. Licenses can now be checked online for free. The Ministry of Transportation website has a free license number search. This tool is easy to use, the results are instantaneous, and can be used to screen for possible fraud. Another common type of fraud is known as value or flip fraud. Here's the scenario. On a purchase or refinance deal, the client will say they are a real estate agent or in the business of buying and selling and promises high fees or lots of business for a quick turnaround on deals. Title may show one or more transfers at increasing values in a short period of time. A lender then agrees to provide a mortgage based on the inflated property value. If the deal closes, the client may use the mortgage proceeds to pay the initial purchase price and then splits the excess funds with the accomplices. The lender may get a valid mortgage, but has been duped into advancing much more than the real property value. LawPro has also seen several attempted frauds involving corporate identity theft. 
The properties involved may be commercial or residential, but are always owned by a corporation. Fraudsters will change or steal the identity of corporate property owners by filing a Form 1 Notice of Change naming new directors and officers. Or they may change the address of existing officers and directors in an annual return filing. The fraudsters then retain a lawyer to help sell or mortgage the corporation's property. A non-exhaustive list of red flags associated with this type of fraud is as follows. A corporation has owned vacant, disused, or run-down property for a long time without activity on title or visible use of land. The property is in a highly marketable or developing area but is subject to restrictive zoning, is environmentally sensitive, or is lacking road access. Real directors, officers, or shareholders of the corporation are elderly, remote, or otherwise vulnerable. Fraudsters may have knowledge of these circumstances and attempt to take advantage. Current officers and directors were appointed very recently. Take a look at the date began in the corporate profile report. This may not be a concern by itself, but something that is a big warning sign if there are other red flags in existence. A Form 1 is filed after a long period without a change in control of the corporation, even where real owners or their agents regularly make corporate filings. A corporation's head office has changed to a non-existent or problematic address, such as a hotel. Taking a look at a Google Street View of the property may assist to determine this. There is a corporate resolutions or minute book with obvious errors or typos. One lawyer is retained to discharge an existing mortgage or file a change notice, but a different lawyer is retained for the borrower in the new mortgage transaction or for the corporation as vendor in a sale. A mortgage statement for discharge purposes shows much less than the registered amount of the mortgage. Small encumbrances such as a construction lien were recently registered and discharged from title. This may be an effort to give credibility to the fraudster's claim as a legitimate owner of the corporation. The lender's or borrower's lawyer is directed to pay sale or mortgage proceeds to parties with no apparent connection to the transaction. Clients that say title insurance for a new mortgage is not required and clients that push for a fast closing. When lawyers think about real estate fraud, they rarely think of shelter fraud, which is a very real source of claims involving people who want to live in the home and genuinely intend to make the mortgage payments. The most common scenario is when an individual or couple, the shelter fraudsters, who don't qualify for a mortgage, enlist the help of a friend or family member. These straw buyers will sometimes for a payment become the borrower and take title to the property as well as present themselves to the lawyer as the purchaser of the home. These straw buyers have no intention of living there and the person who hired them will move in and promise to make the mortgage payments. The risks to lawyers who act on these transactions is that at some point, the person behind the scheme defaults on the mortgage. The friend or straw buyer will find they are on the hook being pursued by the bank. They may sue the lawyer claiming that they were not aware of what they were getting into and that the lawyer knew or should have known that they were buying on behalf of others and should have made them aware of the risks and the consequences of defaulting on the mortgage. Also, lawyers in the majority of residential real estate matters represent the lender as well as the borrower but their duty of care to the lender is sometimes overlooked. Lawyers must provide the bank with any information that is material to the transaction. The lending bank can bring claims against lawyers for failing to disclose all relevant information they knew or should have known. Some warning signs to look out for in shelter fraud are, the client knows little about the property or the client seeks instructions from someone who is not part of the transaction. If a lawyer suspects a straw buyer is involved, the lawyer should try to satisfy themselves the purchaser actually intends to live in the property. For example, the lawyer should consider directly having a discussion with the client regarding whether they intend to live in the property 
and document both having asked these questions and the answer given. The client may be required to sign a declaration stating that the client intends to live in the property. Ask the client a series of questions to investigate the circumstances surrounding the purchase. Look out for any reference to a trust arrangement with a third party in relation to the property. Investigate whether the deposit funds are coming from the client or a third party. LawPro has also seen frauds arising out of cybercrime. For example, a hacker may get into a law firm email account and purport to send instructions in relation to the transfer of money or redirect incoming emails containing confidential information. Similarly, a hacker may get into a client's email account and purport to provide instructions to the law firm with respect to disbursement of funds. With any unusual requests or changes to payment instructions, it is always a good idea to telephone the person to confirm the instructions using the number you have on file. It's best not to rely on the telephone number in the email as this may also be fraudulent. Identifying potential real estate frauds means we need to be mindful and aware of potential red flags. Next, I'll review some red flags when thinking about the clients and then the transaction. These red flags can be found listed in our fraud fact sheet available at practicepro.ca under hot topics, fraud prevention. When thinking about the client, pay attention to the existence of the following red flags. Funds are directed to parties with no apparent connection to the borrower or property. The client changes instructions regarding amounts or payees just prior to closing or fails to bring in funds as promised. The client does not seem interested in the property, the price, the mortgage interest rate, legal or brokerage fees. The client does not appear familiar with the property. The client will not permit contact with a prior lawyer. A stranger appears to control the client and attends to sign documents. One spouse or business partner is mortgaging equity in a property owned by both. The client buys and sells, often preferring to deal in cash only. The client contact is only or primarily by email. When thinking about a transaction, consider the existence of the following red flags. This lengthy list is also available in the real estate fraud fact sheet at practicepro.ca. Repeat activity on a single property or for a single client. Title shows one or more recent transfers, mortgages, or discharges. It is a rental or vacant property. Frequent and quick mortgage discharges on a property. A new referral source sending lots of business. The transaction area is distant from your office. Deposits are not held by an agent or lawyer. Fraudsters often target longtime owners who are deceased, ill, or elderly or who may otherwise be less alert to signs that their identity is being stolen. Rush deals. The client produces a small deposit relative to the purchase price. Amendments to the agreement of purchase and sale, reducing the price, deposit, or adding creditors. The sale is presented as a private agreement with no agent involved, or the named agent has no knowledge of the transaction. A municipality or utility company has no knowledge of a client's ownership. The client is paying little or nothing from his or her own funds. There are unusual adjustments in favor of the vendor or a large vendor take back mortgage. For mortgage transactions, keep in mind that private lenders are often a target. In terms of fraud prevention, securing and protecting your PSP or personalized security package is critical in preventing fraud. A PSP permits access to the system for electronic registration of title documents. You should never share your credentials. Securing your PSP helps prevent internal fraud as only you have the login information. It is also required by the rules of professional conduct. Specifically, rule 6.1-5 and 6.1-6. Protecting your PSP is required under the terms of your agreement with Terranet. A failure to secure your PSP undermines the trust the government has placed in the legal profession. 
We often hear lawyers ask, what happens if I'm away and a transaction is scheduled to close? A helpful review of this issue can be found in the OBA Real Property Section article by Jeffrey Schwartz entitled, Up, Up and Far Away and Still Be Able to Close. The article discusses some of the benefits for sole practitioners of having remote access to their CareView account. Keep in mind that fraudsters can be operating right within your office. Not all fraudsters are strangers. Partners, associates, law clerks, other employees, or independent contractors may turn to fraud because of financial pressure from personal matters. Red flags to be on the lookout for include a person who never takes vacation or sick leave, works long hours or refuses to delegate, a person who undergoes a sudden change in lifestyle or temperament, the firm receives mail for a corporation for which no client file is opened or billed, or a minute book is kept in a person's office instead of with the corporate law clerk. Unusual patterns such as a sudden increase in payments to a person or entity or complaints about slow payment from suppliers or clients or an increase in written off work in progress. For more information on this topic, please see the article When the Unthinkable Happens at practicepro.ca slash lawpromag. To mitigate the risk of fraud, Consider taking steps to cross-check and verify information provided by your client. A few options to consider are as follows. Cross-check names, addresses, and phone numbers of the client and other people or entities involved in the matter on Google and other search engines or on avoidaclaim.com. To find exact matches and close your search terms in double quotes. Do reverse searches on phone numbers. Look up addresses using Street View in Google Maps. Ask banks to confirm that branch transit numbers and checks are legitimate. Confirm that any entity making a payment or loan is aware of the transaction. Contact the company to confirm it is expecting the debtor's payment or business loan, as the case may be. Hold funds until all banks involved confirm funds are clear and can be withdrawn. Overall, listen to your gut instinct. If it feels like something isn't right, then dig deeper and ask questions. Educate yourself and be familiar with the red flags of fraud. Staying organized and keeping open and clear communication between you and your purchaser and lender client will help keep the transaction moving and staying on track. If you ever have any concern regarding the legitimacy of the matter you're handling, look for the red flags of fraud which I have described and more that can be found in the real estate fraud fact sheet on practicepro.ca and ask questions to investigate for further, especially if the facts don't add up or are inconsistent. Visit the avoidaclaim.com blog to search names and email addresses from the frauds reported to Opro. Click on all fraud warnings to see a full listing of names of confirmed fraudsters. If you still aren't sure the matter is legitimate, call LawPro at 1-800-410-1013. Our experience with multiple frauds can help determine if you are being duped. If the matter turns out to be a fraud and there is a potential claim, we will work with you to prevent the fraud if possible and to minimize potential claim costs. You can also help us help other lawyers by sending obviously fraudulent messages, scans of identification, and other documents provided to you to fraudinfo at lawpro.ca. The following are some resources that you may find helpful. For practice aids, including real estate tips and fraud prevention, visit practicepro.ca. Our fraud fact sheets help you know the red flags, what to do if you have a suspicious matter, and provide tips to prevent real estate frauds, bad check frauds, and cyber crime. Visit avoidaclaim.com for latest fraud warnings. You can report a fraud to us on this site 
and subscribe to get updates when new fraud warnings are posted or new law pro resources are available. Learn more about the main issues we see arising in real estate practice. Knowing the risks will help you reduce your risks. Our real estate claims act sheet has been recently updated. Review the TerraView Electronic Procedures Guide. Keep up to speed on Law Society requirements and practice guidelines at the Law Society's website. Review the information available at lawyersworkinggroup.com. A final note and reminder that this program is accredited for 30 minutes of professionalism. If you have general comments on this CPD, please feel free to write us at practicepro at lawpro.ca. Please also feel free to contact me directly at nadia.dalimonte at lawpro.ca. Thank you.